What a morning of news regarding the president, this phone call with Xi, uh, more news on the chip shortage as Toyota cuts production. What should we be thinking going into the weekend? I think that the market's focused on Xi. I think what's so interesting about it, first of all, can I just, while we're talking about great people in CBC, Eunice Yu, I mean, she gives this report, and I'm just sitting here thinking, what well, is she, she's telling the truth in a place where truth is, 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 not, is not really a commodity. And what matters to me is, is that it didn't go well. It did, the call did not go well from the Chinese side. We're hearing intransigence on their side. So, David, I don't know. I mean, the market's just saying, I guess, any talk. Even if it's not great, it's right. better than what we have. And, uh, but, I, I mean, I, I, what I've read so far is the statement from the Chinese, which didn't seem to frame it in a negative tone. Well, I mean, it just, um, you know, you, you didn't hear about follow-up meetings. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I think that you uh, are faced with a president who is focused more on uh, human rights mm -hmm. than the previous president. And that's something that I think that they're, they most fear is our discussion of their human rights. Yeah, the wires uh, do have some uh, readout information quoting senior officials that the conversation discussed uh, the nation's responsibility to ensure that competition doesn't veer into conflict. Right. Also some backstory on the relationship that Biden and she have together because at one point they were both VPs and apparently the discussion harkened back to some of that. Well, Look, any I, I, look. I like the two countries talking because I don't think there's anyone in our country that favors the course that we're currently on. Uh, it's a course where it, it has to be. But we're in a collision course if this continues, and I know people who uh, don't want to do business with China and want to do business with China, but I don't know a soul who wants a collision course. So I think if we can take off the existential conflict. Uh, make it so that it's more difficult for uh, President Xi one day to invade an island near Taiwan, which is probably what would be most likely not an invasion of Taiwan. To take that off the table, then I think that people will start saying maybe there's less of a global risk and let's start picking some stocks that are connected with China. Right. Today was seemed to be the first day that, oddly, the day after Kathy Wood, we did the, two days, it's the Financial Times piece, where there is a belief that these stocks can bounce because maybe the punishment's over. I don't know. The, she is a communist in not in name. Yeah, no, we talk about it every day as we should. Um, talking certainly between the two countries, I think, is viewed more positively than, than not. But to your point, right, how much of a collision course are we on with China in terms of our vast competition in so many areas around the world uh, and obviously the two largest economies? That said, back to the stocks themselves, you can see sort of what the Shanghai Comp has done versus the S&P this year. But, right. of course, the names we've been focused on are so many of those large cap Chinese based companies that have listed here or have very well traded ADRs in other places, Tencent. But should we uh, focus on property companies and what's I, going I, you on? You know, internally? but Jim, the question continues to be from the US based investors who are who who own these, when will it end? Are we at the end? Um, are they done with Didi? Are they done with the gaming companies? Are they done, you know, with the cyberspace administrations it done sort of with what it expects from them in terms of sharing of information? Uh, unclear. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.